External. Warehouse. Morning. Richards and Flint pull the cop car into a paved lot next to a cluster of old warehouse buildings. They are in various states of deterioration. Defunct railroad tracks run behind the buildings. There are a few unmarked commercial vans in the lot, but the area seems largely deserted. They get out of the car. This is it? Are you sure? Yep. Had to do a lot of digging. Weren't these abandoned? There are cars around. Maybe these startups need the space. Okay. Flint and Richards walk up to number eight and enter. Internal. Warehouse. Morning. Despite the shabby appearance of the building, inside, it's busy with people. All around the warehouse are boxes and tubs with the same label as the fertilizer that Cornelius was using. Workers. Pack. Move boxes and load vehicles. Hoskins, female, late 20s, wearing a suit, approaches and extends her hand. Thank you for coming. You must be Officer Flint. Flint shakes her hand. Nice to meet you in person. Thanks for taking my calls. She turns to Richards. Eleanor Hoskins, head of PR. Chief Richards, thank you for your time. Please excuse our appearance. Our setup here is temporary. Until we've built up a market. How long have you been here? About two weeks. Flint and Richards look at each other. Huskins walks them around the perimeter of the warehouse. Off the main room are a few small offices with desks. Richards writes in her notepad, and Flint sneaks photos as Huskins talks. We've been doing a sample program to introduce our fertilizer. It's something new. Instead of fertilizing the soil, it gets absorbed directly into the plants. And it's safe? For use on food. Absolutely. FDA approved. No weird neurological incidences? Huskins looks at him. None. But of course, we will address any customer health complaints. Where is this made? We have a laboratory on the East Coast. Why do you come out here? This part of the country has the biggest collection of small farms still around. As we say, growth potential is huge in small towns. Richard stops and takes a closer look at a tub of fertilizer. So, what exactly happens when this stuff is applied? It concentrates the energy from the sun's rays and stimulates the plant's water absorption, which promotes growth. How often does it have to be applied? And what happens if someone stops using it? Why is your company giving away free samples? Officers, I'm not sure what you're looking for here but everything we're doing is completely above board. Our product is perfectly safe for people, animals, and plants. If our recommended usage instructions are carefully followed, if you have any further questions, I can direct you to our legal team. Now, if you excuse me, I have a meeting I must attend. She turns and briskly walks away to a side office, slamming the door behind her. External warehouse, late morning. Flint and Richards exit the warehouse and head to the cop car. So, they give out enough samples to get plants dependent on their fertilizer, then they hit up these small farms for money. How charitable. Gotta love those small town values. Recommended usage? Sheesh. She did it. Calling it. I mean, they're sketchy scumbags all right. But murder? Something's missing. Internal. Silver Queen's house. Afternoon. There's a knock at the door. Silver Queen opens the door to Flint and Richards. Silver Queen is dressed neutrally. No makeup or elaborate dress. Just flannel and jeans, all in white. Pleasant afternoon, Chief Richards. Oh, and you've brought a friend. Nice to meet you, Officer Flint. He extends his hand and Silver Queen kisses it. (laughs) Thanks, but I'm married. Ah, do come in. Make yourselves at home. I'll put on tea. They enter. The room is decorated in average. Nondescript Middle American style. Flint takes to meandering around the house, looking at pictures on the wall and books on the shelves. He takes photos. Silver Queen? Please, that's for the stage. (laughs) Call me Gary. Gary, we've got a few questions. We will need you to cooperate with our ongoing investigation. Oh, 
Oh, of course. I've got nothing to hide. Richards opens her notepad and scribbles as they talk. Yesterday, you said there were things in the dark. What did you mean? It's dangerous out at night. Big drug problem in the community, but I'm sure you of all people are quite aware. We do substance abuse and addiction recovery groups every Tuesday. Oh, wonderful. If there's anything I can do or if anyone needs a sponsor, I would love to help. Silver Queen rolls up their sleeve and shows old track mark scars. It's the least I could do from someone who's been there. Wow, thank you for the offer. Silver Queen hands her tea. What brings you to this area? Silver Queen takes a sip of tea before speaking. Oh, it's a long story. I was in a relationship with someone from this area. You might be familiar with him. His name is Joseph Cobb. Silver Queen goes to Flint, hands him tea, and sits back at the table. Cobb? The mayor is Paul, but I think he had a brother. Silver Queen nods and gestures to a framed photo, which Flint was inspecting of two men in uniform. We met in the military. That's you? Flint points at the photo and Silver Queen nods. He spoke fondly of here, but regretfully his family disowned him. You know. For his lifestyle? Of course. That plus the stress of adjusting back to civilian life. It's, it's hard on anyone. I got clean, but Joseph did not. When I contacted Next of Kin, it had been decades since they heard from him. They had regrets, too. So that brought you out here? Just a visit at first, but the more time I spent out here, the more I realized I was done with the city life. When did you buy this place? About a year ago. And the nightclub was six months later. We just opened two weeks ago. Flint and Richards make eye contact, sipping tea. And Cobb? Polly? Oh, he's embarrassed. This is all new for him, but he's grieving too, so I make sure I'm patient. Of course. Ah, it's getting late. I'll need to do my hair for tonight, but please, do give me the details of that recovery group. Sure. We need all the help we can get. She scribbles on a piece of paper and hands it to Silver Queen. They finish their tea. And come back if you need anything. Will do. Thanks, Gary. They exit. External. Cop car. Late afternoon. So, what did you think? We'll see. I smell a rat, just don't know where. See if Gary's story checks out. Righto. I know she's hiding something. I'll check the closet. <laughs> Shut up. That ship has long sailed anyway. Internal. Police station. Richard's office. Night. Richards is at one end of her desk, typing. Flint is mashed in on the other end, also at his computer. Okay, I found school records and yearbooks. Here's Joseph, and a few years earlier, Paul. So far, matches up with what Gary said. Flint leans over to look. Look at how much hair he had. What have you got? So I was checking the regulations for chemical use on the cornfields. Interesting stuff. They had to pass all these laws to make the land usable after the military did nuclear weapons tests around here in the 50s. Huh. And get this. According to the historical records, the cornfields a couple hundred years ago were an ancient Indian burial ground. So? So, all this could be because of... A curse! That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The radio crackles to life. A voice on the other end speaks police jargon. Is that... Oh no, the nightclub. They leap up and rush out. External. Silk's nightclub. Night. Flint and Richards drive up. Lights on and siren blaring. They jump out, leaving the lights on. An ambulance pulls up too. There's a crowd of people gathered in a cluster outside the nightclub. Flint and Richards push through the crowd and see Silver Queen in full makeup and dress, kneeling and weeping next to the mangled body of the two lingerie dancers from the night before. Their bodies are stabbed through with corn cobs, and they are both dead. 
I, I told them not to come after Dark. I, I, I told them. Flint and Richards disperse the crowd and mark the crime scene. Cobb steps out of the crowd and approaches. Richards, where were you? Hello, Cobb. Introducing yourself again? That ain't any of your business. Why haven't you caught this menace yet? We were researching suspects before this. Well, that ain't good enough. Richards rubs the bridge of her nose. We can't just make arrests without solid evidence. You have to do something. People are terrified. Richards sighs. She makes eye contact with Flint and gestures with her head. Flint's face falls and he sighs. She turns back to Cobb. Fine. Richards and Flint approach Silver Queen. Gary White, you are under arrest. Flint handcuffs Silver Queen and recites the Miranda rights. Silver Queen weeps louder as Flint walks them to the cop car. Wait, this isn't what I meant. Uh, you can't- Stop telling me how to do my job. We're doing everything we can. Unless you've got some answers, I don't want to hear it. As the ambulance workers clean up the scene, Richards and Flint get in the car with Silver Queen in the back. They drive off. <laughs> 